We are going to create a DAISY database. What that means, I will explain how you create it. I will explain too. Let's say we have a complicated database. In, in this case, I have a, a, quite a few tables. Every table is hooked up to another table. And we want to look through that system. Let me show you what a DAISY database would do. If I would open the form courses, it will show me all the courses we have in this database. These option buttons, or they are actually toggle buttons, allow you to sort by full name, by abbreviation, by type code, by level code, etc. When I double click on one of these codes, I get another form that opens up. So I'm peeling the petals of that da daisy one by one. And when I double click there, I get another form, etc. You can make it as complicated as you want. I'm, I'm closing all of this. That's what a daisy database does. So what did I do? I have always two forms. One is an individual course and one is all the courses together. Form department is a single department, departments is the list of all the departments, etc. And then we have subforms, etc., etc., etc. First, I would recommend that you create a query first, for in each plural form that has everything, we put only five fields. So I can put five buttons way on top. So I need a query in order to do so. Let's do it for courses. So let's do that for our queries. We create a query for, let's say, the course information. I'm just going to do the first five fields. The third field, fourth field, and the fifth field. Save the query. And let's call it QRY courses. Okay. Let's do one more for, say, let's say, for the students, and the rest I leave up to you. You basically do the same thing all the time. For students, again, five fields, but that's all we are going to show. Save the query. Let's call it query students. Okay. Now we are going to use those queries to create the plural forms, courses, etc. Let's do that from scratch. So I'm going to use the form wizard based on the query courses and I put all five of the fields in there. Please make sure that you make that form tabular. Next. What title do you want for your form? I don't really care. So here we have that form. Now we are going to implement those buttons way on top. So we empty this section. Highlight it and delete. And put a, from the design tab, an option group in there or a frame box. I give them just provisional names because later on we will fill the real names depending on what the field is in that specific form. Let's VBA do that. We accept A as a default value. It corresponds with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the fifth button is number 5. Save the value for later use and make sure that they are toggle, toggle buttons. So unfortunately it puts them vertically. So we have to make that horizontally. Make sure that they correspond a little bit with the, the field that they are going to represent. Otherwise they will be later on on top of each other. Then make that form frame a little shorter. Close the gap. And make sure that your each record doesn't take too much space. 
So this is what we have at this moment. It, it does not put the labels correct yet because we have to do that when the form loads. We are going to fill them with the name of this field, that field, etc. And when I click on it, then it will sort by this field and then it will sort by that field. In order to make the next one, we probably want to make a copy of this that saves us a lot of work. So let's make a copy of that section. Control C and close the form and save the changes. Now we are going to do that for the query students and then all the other forms that you want to do in your database. So we create a new form again, this time based on the query students. All the fields, the rest is all the same, make sure it's tabular. Next, whatever the name is, done. Now we are going to replace that form header with what we saved, Control V. That got in the wrong spot because I hadn't selected the form header yet. Control V. Close your gap again. And there is your second form. We are going to create a subroutine that you can use on any form. So it should be in a module. In module one. I did all of that already to save time. First I created the fill buttons subroutine and then a sorting routine. The fill button says I would like to use two arguments. What is the form that we are doing that for and what is the option group we are doing that for. Then we declare ORS as a DAO record set. You can only do that if you have under tools references if you have in there the Office 15 Access Database Engine object activated. Then we declare variables of the text box type and the toggle button. We set ORS to the form. Which form? The one that we pass on through these arguments to the record set clone. Find how many fields we have in that record set clone. And loop from i equals 0 to the count minus 1. Everything in Access runs from a 0 based. It starts at 0. So the count is always one more. Then we want in the section details of O form from the controls collection, the 0, zero is 1, and then the first one, second one, third one, fourth one. It will usually be 4. But in case there is a field missing, we can adjust that. Then we set O toggle to the controls I plus one. Why? Because the label of that uh, frame or that option group is number zero. So you want one, two, three, four, five. Then the control source in the background of that field is the name of fields zero, one, two, three, four. The caption of the toggle button puts O toggle to the left of O tb left so it, it, it nicely lines up the width the same width as the other one lock it so you can do editing there and then we make sure that in this form you cannot add new records this is just a search form an overview form and we maximize then we have a second sub routine that uses two variables again that you pass on for sorting which form and which control. Declare i value as an integer. i value is the value of that particular frame from 1 to 5. Turn the form order by on property to, to true and order by the control of that specific value, the caption. So now all we have to do is implement that when the form loads we want to fill the buttons so we go back to the form courses for instance go to the design screen and implement from the properties of the form the event open on open click on the ellipses there code builder 
and we are going to say in form open we are going to call that sub that we just called control space bar allows you to see the list and we want fill the buttons fill buttons space has two arguments which form the form that we that this code is in can be called by me or you could use the name of the form and we want the option group that is on that me me dot frame 11 in this case then we have to do something to sort by that button so at this moment we should have everything already showing up properly let's see whether that is true when I go into the design screen it tells me perfectly that is the field is course code full name abbreviation etc it does not sort yet so when I click there it doesn't do a thing so now we go to the design screen and we are going to say when you update any of these buttons in that frame select the frame and go to the event after update click on the three dots the ellipsis the code builder then we are going to do the sorting subroutine which control me frame 11 which form just me so now we should be able to do that for this form when I open it not only do I have the correct codes but I can also click on something and it will sort by then I need to do one more thing when someone double clicks on one of these fields we are going to implement another code so that is a double click on the first field let's do that in the code again select that field on double click code builder and we're going to do a double click I, I have to explain that uh, a little better probably let me show you what the code was in the form code courses that I made already for you I put in there a do command open form and then the name of the form you want to open that's the first argument yes we do have a where condition the course code has to be the same as my course codes are not really numbers they are strings I could have made them numbers that would have made things a little easier but because it's a string I have to open a string after the equal sign but I am already in a string so I use a single quote and then I close the double quote from this double quote space ampersand space me the course code that field name is different all the time so you have to adjust that each time and then I have to close that single quote here so space ampersand space and then double quote single quote double quote and now the last argument is open arguments why am I doing that I am saying when I open the form for this code I implement an open arguments setting I happen to call it called why did I do that so later on I can make sure that when someone tries to open the form course on its own it will say hey I don't get this argument so that means you called it illegally and I don't listen to you so let me show you how we did that in the form code course in the form open it's going to check did you have an argument to open it if you don't have an argument I will not open it so if me open arguments is null then set cancel to true and that's what we did here so I did that for all of them so we are pretty well set now I'll show you in another video very soon how to make a switchboard for all of this